Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. Today is 15th March and I'm recording this video on 15th March. Today is a very historic day because today is the day where GPT-4 has launched. So I've created a small summary and I'll kind of read the summary for all of you so that you are well aware of what GPT-4 has to offer. In the coming videos, I'll show you the power of GPT-4. But for now, what I'll kind of take you through uh, is the actual summary of what GPT-4 can do for you and how this is kind of impressive, right? So yes, let's kickstart the video. So all of you know that OpenAI has basically launched a new model called as GPT-4, which can now understand images and text. The model is available to OpenAI's paying users at this point of time, uh, which is through GPT+. And for API access, I think we developers have to wait. So we basically have to sign up on a wait list to access the API. GPT-4 is kind of reasonable or economical in terms of the pricing. Uh, GPT-4 cost about $0.03 per thousand prompt tokens and $0.06 per thousand completions. Now you might be wondering what is a prompt token and what is a completion token? Well, prompt tokens are the words that are fed into GPT-4 while completion tokens are the content that is generated by GPT-4. So GPT-4 has been co-developed by Microsoft and has been used at this point of time by several companies such as Stripe, Duolingo, Morgan Stanley and Khan Academy. GPT-4 basically generates text but the inputs have now improved so you can kind of now give image as inputs as well as text as inputs. Uh, which is basically an update from the GPT-3, GPT-2 series wherein your interface was purely text-based. GPT-4 at this point of time has passed a simulated bar exam with a score of around the top 10% of test takers, uh, which demonstrates that the model can perform at a human level on various professional and academic benchmarks. So it's a big jump from what GPT-3.5 was. Uh, as far as I remember, the same exam when GPT or ChatGPT kind of took that exam, it uh, didn't even perform that great. But here it's kind of doing really good. It's on the top 10% of the 10, uh, test takers. So it's doing a fabulous job. The other interesting aspect of GPT-4 is the ability to understand images. For example, GPT-4 can caption and interpret relatively complex images such as identifying a lighting cable adapter from an image from an iPhone plugged into a wall socket. Uh, additionally, GPT-4 can extrapolate and analyze the content of images such as preparing recipes from a picture of the uh, something that's kept inside of refrigerator. So all of these are new capabilities that you can kind of use going forward with GPT-4. One other capability that OpenAI has introduced this time uh, in the API is called the system messages that allows developers to prescribe a style and task by giving specific directions. So system messages are essentially instructions that set the tone and establish the boundaries for the AI's next interactions. For example, a system message might read, you are a tutor that always responds in the Socratic style. You never give the student the answer, but always try to ask the right question just to help that the student kind of starts thinking for themselves, right? So all of these are some capabilities that GPT-4 has to offer at this point of time. Despite the upgrades, I think OpenAI has come out and acknowledged the fact that GPT-4 is not perfect. And I believe no language model at this point of time is perfect. Uh, it can still make reasoning errors or hallucinate facts. However, OpenAI notes that improvements have been made in particular areas such as decreasing the likelihood of responding to requests for disallowed content or providing medical advice for self-harm. All of this has been taken care by OpenAI. GPT-4, according to me, has a lot of potential. And OpenAI is confident that the model can improve people's lives by powering many applications. However, OpenAI feels that there is still a lot of work to be done in order to improve the uh, GPT series models, which is where going forward while retraining, uh, OpenAI kind of feels that the entire models would improve with time. So this is a short summary video that I wanted to create and share across with all of you today, just so that you are well aware of what is happening in GPT uh, world and uh, how you can leverage GPT for your applications. So now you're not only limited to text as inputs, but you can feed in images 
and catch hold of some amazing insights from GPT models. Stay tuned for the future videos wherein I'll actually show you how to use GPT-4. So thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day ahead.